Hi guys, this is Nadia from Embodied Crafts and today I want to show you how to create a soldered wire filigree pendant with gemstone accent. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button because I upload new stuff on a regular basis. I quite often make kits and PDF tutorials for the videos I put up on here and I'll pop a link in the description below. Um, I also have all sorts of gemstones, square and half round wire, some beads and all sorts of other goodies on my website. So take a gander over and see if there's anything you fancy. Last but not least, come and join us in our uh, wire wrappers and metal smiths group on Facebook. I'll also pop a link below. Right, let's get started. Okay, so I usually just start out with a few doodles on a piece of paper um, and then I just decide what kind of shape I'd like to go with so I'm quite happy with this one so I'm going to be using that I try to keep the lines the same thickness as the wire just to keep it realistic when you place in the wire on top so in this case this is uh, 1.3 mil which is your 16 gauge wire so I'm just cutting off a piece and obviously the length depends on um, this, the size of the doodles that you've created so it doesn't really uh, matter it's always better to go a little bit longer because it can always cut off but it's not as easy to actually add in so then i'm just going to fold this in half like so i'm going to start with this side and then i'm going to use some bell making pliers or round making pliers and I'm just going to use these to create a curvature. If you don't have bail making pliers, you can use round making pliers as well. And I just try and make the curvature nice and round. So to do that, I actually come in here on the end before I curl. And I kind of try and find a nice sort of curvature. And you will need to trim it off. And it's a bit tougher with the thicker wire um, to create the swirls as you get closer in because they are let me trim some off because it's harder to manipulate so try and keep it nice and round round those pliers are probably better for this with the finer tips the only problem is that the fine tips don't have the strengths to manipulate the thicker wire gauge so you're just going to have to play around with it and shape it um, and to begin the um, the um, tapering I usually grab the tip and I squeeze the tip of the wire as I rotate this gives me a nice sort of starting point. Obviously, we're going to file these later on, but this is how you can get a good starting point. And if you don't have a file, this is how you can, can do it. So we're just going to make this fit this shape, and we're going to create various different components to go in it. Okay, so I've created two components, and I've made sure that they fit onto the little doodle I've created here um, so the second component which is just a swirl like that I'm going to be placing on top of this swirl so what I'd like to do with this is so the component actually fits into that groove and so what we're going to do is we are going to file down the end of the wire here so I've got these really really fine jewelry tools that you can use um, you get these on eBay Amazon everywhere anybody that sells um, craft articles and jewelry tools you can get these and they're really quite handy for small stuff like this so you can file them very gently what we want is to bring this to a point so very evenly we're going to file around until we've got a nice sort of pointed tip so we're also going to do the same with the swirls on the inside so for this what I'd like to use is my rotary tool and then some 
diamond tipped drill bits and they're really quite handy to get into small spaces like this so that you can actually control um the shape and the size and they're really quite good for that sort of thing so if you don't have a rotary tool obviously you can get again these needle files and um, they do come in round as well so you can use these round needle files pop these in to actually file down the inside so i'm just going to demonstrate how i do this so i've got this four dom here i'm just going to slide it in most of these dremels if you don't have one of these they come with a collet like this one so that you can actually change these come in different sizes they fit into the attachment here and you can match them to the shank so that you actually fit them into your dremel um, so the next step is then to pick up i quite like to use a pair of pliers to hold on to it and then i'm just going to start You can see that this helps me to actually get into all the tight spaces and obviously take your time with this cleaning up nicely obviously you don't want any marks this will take away any wire any tool marks that you have in your wire as well and then just continue until you have the desired sort of effect at the tip of the wire and obviously this end here needs to be fine enough so that it fits into this gap and i'm always going to make the side on the inside a little bit flatter so it lines up flush with the inside okay so now we've got our bits and bombs and now we're going to cut a piece for the bale that's going to be at the top so you're creating a loop so that you're able to attach another bale or maybe another loop depending on how you want to do it so what i'm doing here is i've made a coil with um, with wire so the size depends this is one mil which is your 18 gauge and i'm going to cut it at an angle obviously the angles here are slanted so you need to match the angles on the jump ring using the flush side and you can adjust that later on with um you know some files or so so just going to check if that fits. I think I may need to cut off a little bit more. So obviously I need to trim off a bit more and you need to file both sides so that they match up. We're going to do that next. And then uh, the next step is the soldering to move on. Okay, so I've got several wire lengths. I started at 15 centimeters and I cut down two and a half centimeters each time. So the smallest one um, is, was actually just about half a centimeter. And these are all going to be flexed to start off with the flux helps the metal to flow so I'm using flux which I got off uh, the Cooks and Gold website which is called Oro Flux um, I quite like using it and obviously I've got my charcoal block you can create a little divot if you want the beads to be rounded. I quite like to have these have a little bit of a flat um, bottom because it's easier to solder them onto surfaces. So I quite like them to be flat. Um, so quite important once you've finished with your creating your beads, you need to quench your charcoal block, especially the softer one, because they have a tendency to stay really hot for really long and then they kind of eat themselves up. So when you're done, just quench it um, right so I'm going to turn on a torch but I like to have my pick ready that will help me to help the, um, if I need to move the wire give it a bit of a touch so I like to keep the heat low maybe I need it a bit more So 
these are all my little beads I don't pick them up until the sort of chrome sheen has gone because if you take any tweezers to them when they're hot like that they're going to get distorted so wait until the sheen has kind of gone um, and now you can pick them up and quench them um, now I prefer to use um, fine silver to make these beads you can use sterling silver but the problem obviously with sterling silver is that they oxidize um, and then they turn black and they're really hard to clean up again I think this is one of them here um, they're really hard to clean up again and obviously you need to have clean um, clean sort of joints and um, an area for the flux to flow so you, for the for the um, the solder to flow so I prefer to use fine silver for that just because they stay nice and clean um, and I don't really have to do anything cleaning before I solder them so that's how you make these little beads and the important thing that I also want to mention is when you're cutting your wire down just make a note of what wire gauge you've used and what sort of lengths you've used um, because that will help you the next time around when you want to create beads of similar size so just keep a note of that right so we're going to be doing a tube setting and the tools we're going to be needing for this is a vernier caliper and we need a stone setting burr and a round burr and normally i can't use it for this one because i don't have one that's big enough but i will show you how um, we're going to be using this one um, then we obviously have our tubing here and when I buy tubing to set my stones, I always try and have this about half a millimeter bigger than the outside of my stone. Um, and a wall thickness preferably to uh, be around one millimeter thick, just so that you can, you know, take some metal away from the outside and some metal away from the inside. And that stone is a beam. I don't know if it fits all right. It's maybe a little bit uh, too big for that, but you can kind of compensate for that by drilling away from the inside or the outside, depending on how big your stone is. Obviously, the thicker your tube, the more room you have to play with that. Um, when you're setting a stone at a later stage, you can always file if the tubing is too big. You can file some material away from the outside. Um, and then I've got a tube cutting jig which is really useful you can cut your tube um just you know by eye but uh, it doesn't really turn out straight and quite often there's um there's an angle so these are really useful tools to make sure that you've got a 90 degree angle and obviously this is your burr life that we're going to use because you need to keep your burrs lubricated um all right so let's get started right so first up we're going to be measuring the stone um so i've got my vernier i like these electronic ones because they're quite handy you get those ones that are mechanical where you can just read them uh with just like a ruler you just have to know how to read them so i like these because they're quick um so measuring the stone roughly and that's about 4.7 now obviously calibrated stones are much better for this if you're going to set quite a few because you can obviously have the same burrs it's quite difficult the stones that i have are not calibrated so you know to get the correct size burr is quite difficult that's why i don't actually have the ball burr uh, one that fits the size and um, i need to buy one of each size they're not really expensive and you get these you know on amazon ebay there's uh, in the uk you get them on crooks and gold and then there's i think uh cousins do them i'm not sure uh, but you can get them um everywhere in different sizes and they cost a couple of quid um so you measure your stone it's about 4.8 and the burr i have as the closest in size i could find is about 4.68 so i'm going to have to play a little bit obviously it's recommended to get a burr that actually fits your stone now a ball burr you would have one that is maybe a slightly smaller than your stone is this is just to take away material from the inside of the tube so your ball burr would be slightly smaller than your actual stone just to take away material and then once you've drilled with your ball burr then you would then come in with your stone setting burr and create the seating for the stone so we're going to be doing that now when i cut my tubing um what I'd like to do is, if we're going to take the stone again, we're going to measure the actual height of it. So the tubing, I'm going to cut it. 
I measured the actual height of the stone, it's about 3.1 mil. So I like to go at least um, one millimeter above uh, the measurement here, it's just so that there is no room for the stone for the culet to poke out the bottom. Um, but also, if you need, you know, by any chance, take away some more material from the top, you've got that option to do that. So I always add on a little bit more than I actually need, so that I have the option to just file some off the top. Um, okay, so now let's get our tube set up. I'm going to be cutting it. Okay, so I've measured again. So I was, uh, the stone was 3.1 mil tall, so I've taken a measurement of 4.1. And what we're going to do here is measure is from the top and you can just cut a groove so you kind of you don't really need to scar it very gently you don't need to create a very heavy you might not be able to see that what if you, you can actually use um a marker pen to mark your tubing if you're going to scour that i think this is for me i can actually see what i'm doing here so there's a little mark here so I've got my jig here, so you can either place the tubing and use the groove mark to adjust this little section here and just line it up. Well, that's good enough for this sort of size. Or else you can just use your vernier again and then, you know, sort of adjust the section here to 4.1 mil so that it lines up. Um, and then I'm just going to close this off just over the top and then we're going to use our saw here uh, to start. and obviously you want to make sure that <clears throat> your blades are always lubricated you can also use beeswax for that um real life works quite well for me i use it on my drill bits as well so I place this over so you need to make sure that it's lined up properly because uh i can't actually see properly without my glasses on so that seems to be okay so what we're going to do is hold this in place so now the tubing is pushed up against this little plate here and this will come over the top and then we are just going to cut so I'm just going to continue with that so just take your time and the groove that you have in that tool will help you to get a nice straight edge all the way to the bottom so i'm just going to cut this um and then we're going to move on to the next step right so here's the tube that's what it looks like so now what we're going to do is we're going to place it against our pendant here line it up and obviously the little bees that we've just created we're going to add these as well so we're just going to push this against the design so and i like to use these beads just to close off the little opening here um, where there's swirls because these tend to catch on clothing and hair and it's really frustrating I mean I've got long hair and um, I can never wear stuff that has got a sort of open hooks like that because my hair was and it drives me nuts so I like to do that so I put the beads there and the bail so we've cut a little jump ring we've placed the bail again so we're going to solder all of that on and obviously this is quite a big um sort of setting so there isn't much surface area to hold it in place so i really like to uh, make sure that i have a little bit more surface area so i like to place this against pen and press this down and then i'm going to take a marker pen and mark just above the um where the uh, the setting meets the pendant and that will let me know that we can cut a little groove so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to use a burr um yeah and this is i'm not sure what they're called so we're just going to be using that to cut a little groove into this um section here and let's use some burr life and just and so gently try to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Just below it, obviously. And what that will let you do is have just a little bit more surface area. So 
I'm just going to continue until we've got a nice little groove and, and that will let you slot the uh, the bottom of that swirl into the little groove and gives you a little bit more space for the solder to sit so that doesn't doesn't break off so easily. If there's only a fraction of a millimeter contact this will come undone uh, very quickly. So we're going to be cutting that and then we're going to be soldering all of this together. Okay so and I've placed all of these on and you can see that this little setting is a bit more flush than it was before and I've also placed the little beads on there and you can see I've got my trusty little flux pen. Um, as I said many times before this is um, one of those watercolour pens that is actually used for I think watercolouring I'm not really sure I just find it really really useful to put your flux in. You know, I used to use a spray bottle and um, or a just a normal sort of pencil and it just doesn't seem to work for me so I really quite like this because you can just pick up a piece of flux um, and then just place it I mean not a piece of flux a piece of solder and then place these with while you're actually fluxing the piece you can place these all around your pieces um, and it's fluxing everything at the same time so I find this really useful so we're just going to put flux all around and then we're going to be soldering. So this is medium flux. I mean, why do I keep saying flux? This is medium solder. Um, just because we are still going to add some more components. There will be a bale that we're going to be adding on later on. So we're just going to place solder, medium solder all around it. Um, and then we're going to be adding the bale at a later stage and also the filigree details in the middle here. So once we've added all the flux, uh, flux again, the solder, we're going to um, solder it all together and then move on to the next step. Okay, so I've placed everything on there and I've put my flux everywhere. Um, and I'd like to say that normally if um, I have a pendant like this and I want to add some balls and details like that, I try and solder from the back. Um, because obviously the solder flows much nicer if it's from underneath so from the front it looks much neater um, but because of the setting I'm going to solder from the front so I'm going to start up my torch and we're going to be soldering and go in nice circular motions around the piece and try not to directly um, heat the solder but actually the um, the whole piece so that the solder and everything goes up to temperature and it and it flows obviously that as i always say uh, the solder will flow where the heat is so just focus on for instance for uh, soldering the setting here try and focus at the back of the piece so that the solder will flow towards the um the setting and down to the pendant itself right that's the solder And I like to put my flame quite low so I have a bit more control over it, holding my left hand. And the flux, I want to try and burn it off, so I kind of flick the flame on and off uh, because with flux it sort of burns whitish and bubbles up and kind of tends to displace the solder. So I want to try and kind of make that happen without the solder popping all over the place. It. Use my solder pick to hold things in place. It seems already heating up. So go around, put it back. That's one. Just be careful not to move too much. use your pick to help you push So that's all right. 
so that seems to have worked out okay that looks great and now we're going to pop this into the pickle pot and get it all cleaned up okay so that's what it looks like the soldering actually didn't turn out too bad I, as i said i really like to normally solder from the back um so that to have all the ugly sort of solder bits and pieces on the back but it turned out okay you can see here the flattened section of the piece um of the setting so that it has a bit more surface area and then from the front you can see the solder um is pretty good here so that won't fall off um, so yeah, so what we're going to do next is before I do anything else, I want to polish this up and I get rid of any marks, bumps and um, ugly bits and pieces um, so that we then can, uh, you know, set the stone and add the filigree and then also add the bell. So I'm going to be polishing that up and then we're going to move on to the next step. Um, if you want to know more about polishing, I've got a video. Um, I will pop the, the link in the description for that. Uh, so you can watch that um, and how to get your pieces to a nice sort of uh, nice shiny finish. Um, as I said, I'll pop that in the link below. Okay, so that's everything polished up and I've given it a bit of a clean on the inside as well. So the next step is to actually add the filigree before we're going to continue with the stone because we need to do some more soldering. Um, we also need to add the bail, but before we do that, we're going to be adding the filigree. Um, and I've made little sections here. Um, I have made a tutorial on how to make filigree wire and how to shape it. So I'm going to pop that in the link below. I'm going to try and keep my videos you know, as short as possible so there isn't too much information in them. Um, you know, some people know how to do this already, so I used... I put these uh, as different sections so you can watch if you need to. So I've made these little filigree pieces and I'm going to be adding these to the pendant itself. So we're going to slot these in like that. I'm going to be doing the same with the one up top. So just pop it in. Um, and we're going to be flipping this over and soldering from the back that's why i'm not adding the bail first because it'll be difficult to add so that's what it looks like so we're going to flip this over and then solder it from the back so, right so i've placed the filigree and you can add if you wanted to if you've got gaps um or spaces that you'd like to fill up you can just use some beads you can see i've popped one in here um just to fill up the gaps a bit so i'm going to place this on my charcoal block I'm going to put it upside down because of the um, the, the um, stone setting. I want it to be flush. That's what it looks like now. And I've got this um, this special filigree flux um, that I've bought. I can't actually remember where I got it from. Uh, but you can get this Rio Grande carries it as well. So if you need to buy some, you can use it. If you don't have any of this stuff, you can just buy um, you can just buy normal solder and cut it up and put it on um, on your filigree as well. But this stuff works really really well because it just gets in all the nooks and crannies. Um, and once you solder it, everything is definitely you know set in place. So I really recommend you getting some if you gonna if you're planning to work with filigree um, at all. This is very useful to have. So again, I've got my little brush here and I'm just going to place this all over and as I said earlier I prefer to work from the back and um, because it will hide all sorts of sins so if you're going to put it there and the solder doesn't flow properly you can then hide it a little bit on the back so just place this here and once everything is set up we're going to be soldering everything together Right, got it all set up. So now we're going to solder again, slow movements and from the back. Heat it up evenly. You 
see that flash of silver that means that everything has soldered so we're going to quench it and i'm going to check that all the soldered joints are tied up so it looks okay so turn it around and you have a look and then the way to check that everything has solid in place you don't really want any sort of loose areas because that will make the filigree come apart later on so you can take a pair of pliers you can just gently check if there's any movement in the wires that you've just soldered so that all seems to be okay nice and tight so so that's that so now we're going to give this um another polish and then uh, we're going to do the tube set right. so i've got these ready-made bells i mean obviously you can make your own but i just find it's so much easier i really like the look of these so i've got these little bells that i've bought in bulk some couple of years ago and i really like them i'm gonna dread when i run out of them um so i like to they, they usually come with two prongs so i'm just going to add that through here and i'm going to squeeze the shut and then we're going to be soldering this so very gently obviously you don't want to scratch anything like that and then if you wanted to i mean there's several ways to actually solder a pendant like that you can um there's a potato trick so if you cut a potato in half and you stick whatever you don't want to you know get damaged during soldering you stick it into the potato and then you solder the open area and that will prevent anything from breaking um, or else you can use something like this i've got um something that's called thermogel and i put that everywhere i want to protect the solder um, and that would prevent so when you then solder this it prevents anything from um, from flowing i mean you could also put this into a wet cloth wrapped area you don't want to you know to to solder or flow again into wet cloth or put it in water there's so many ways to prevent the heat from getting where you don't want it to get to so i'm just going to add the thermogel um, and then we're going to be soldering the bell so i'm going to set that up now right so i tried to set up i hope you can see what i'm doing here so the trick is i've already put the thermo lock on everything i don't want to melt or to flow again rather um, and i've put the bell on one clamp and then the pendant on the other because I want to make sure that the the bail doesn't actually touch any of the um, the little loop that I've put for the bail on, so that in the event of the solder flowing in the wrong direction, um, it doesn't actually attach the bail to the pendant at all, so it stays loose. So I've used the clamp here to hold these two tightly together, and now we're going to try and solder this together. Again, I'm using quite a low flame and I want to try and control it so that I can solder only the area that I want to solder. Try and focus it on the bale rather than anything else and heat that up. so that went quite smoothly and that should have um so you see it's still movable and that should be the bell attached so that's great so now thermolock actually helped to keep everything didn't even burn off that one so so it was quite um was all right so now the bell is still loose so we're going to put that into our solution and then we're going to be polishing it up right so the next step is to set the stone so i'm going to be using my heart burr or my my stone setting burr normally i would start off with a round ball burr um like this but i don't actually have a size that matches the setting or the stone so what this does if you're using one that is actually the correct size it just takes away the material and actually saves your stone setting burr so you would just take away some material and the and the burr would be slightly smaller than the stone that you are trying to set whereas the stone setting burr or the way i do it anyway is roughly the same size as the stone um you need to be obviously very careful to make sure that 
and um, you don't take away too much material otherwise the stone is not going to sit flush so what I'm going to do next is to drill out an area for the stone to sit in and I'm going to aim for an area just deep enough so that the table of the stone which is the flat surface on top is sitting flush with the um, the cut edge of the setting so I'm just going to add some burr life so I'm going to very gently come in and you need to make sure actually if you have a drill press or so that would work much better uh, because the straighter you go in the better it is and obviously with these burrs the slower you go the better it is for them and um, because it will save the burr and you won't burn out the bit which is what happens a lot when you first start out because uh, you go too fast and then you blunt your bit so it wasn't sticking in place so I decided to take it out of the ball vise because I find it easier to do it like that I don't have the right bits at the moment so it's easier for me to control it like that you see I'm going quite slowly you really don't need to go fast you have much more control and it really does save your um your setting burr slower you go so let's just double check fit and that obviously needs quite a bit you can see there needs to be a lot more to be taken off so i'm going to take the stone out again but that looks good so far and then just remember obviously to add your burr life or whatever lubricant you have available and go slow so it's going to keep going because that will save your burrs and it'll actually last quite a long time if you go at a slow speed the faster you go the more you will burn them out just keep going and obviously all the silver bits that come out um, you can save them so I'm using a brush to clean that up. Check your stone every so often. Still quite a bit to go, actually not too much, so looking good. So we're just going to pop it out and we're going to keep going with that until everything sits flush and then we're going to set the stone. Right, so I've drilled a bit more, so now I'm going to seat the stone and see what it looks like, see how flush it is. Just make sure it's as level as possible. And I think from the side you can see that the table is pretty much flush. Needs adjusting a little bit so that it's nice and level. But I think that's great. So we're going to now seat the stone and then we're going to use some bezel punches to push down on the wall outside. Now as I said earlier if the wall obviously is too thick it actually really helps. You can use a jeweler's file. Uh, obviously a much finer one than this one to go around the corners if it's much thicker it's actually quite thin so it'll work quite well but if the walls are too thick you can thin out the uh, the outside walls a little bit so that the, um, the bezel punches or the um, anything any other tool that you use in a, a bezel pusher will work to push the edges over so that right so that's the stone set and it looks pretty flush from the side here so the next step is to bend the metal over the stone so we're going to use one of these um, stone setting punches there are various ways to actually you know fold the metal over the stone I mean you get um, these punches and then you've got your four domes with the uh, hammer bit for instance here um, and this will hammer the metal over the stone so you can use that as well but obviously most people won't have so if you can get these these are this is a bezel setting punch set which you can get again on ebay or amazon and these are quite useful if you don't have these kind of tools and the way this works is we're going to place this on a hard surface actually because it's a bit offset i'm going to put it like that and then this will fit into a chuck so i'm going to screw this in so i'm going to use about 6.5 millimeters because the 5.5 is a little bit too small and we're going to place it over the stone obviously make sure that the stone sits nice and flush and we're going to sit it over the stone 
and we are going to use you should really use a mallet but i don't really have a mallet available so i'm going to use this hammer that i have here and you just need to tap very gently you don't need to go too hard you want to make sure that you don't break your stone you can actually start off by just gently um bending the metal because the walls of the settings are actually pretty thin this should already give you a good sort of setting and burnishing at the same time so when you're doing this it will bend the metal over the stone and i tend to turn the tool so that if there's any uneven sections at all i get everything smooth and that will already you can already see if you look from the side here it burnishes the metal i don't know if that is very clear or not in the video but you can see the shiny section and this sort of bends the metal you can see the stone is already pretty secure so you don't necessarily have to hammer um, and just pushing the metal over the stone is enough but obviously you need to make sure that the stone is seated very well and if it isn't um, you can just take the hammer and obviously this is quite a heavy hammer so anything would be better than than this if you have a mallet a rawhide mallet or something like that that will work and then gentle taps again remember to turn remember to turn your tool and obviously just keep going and then obviously test the stone each time you want to be very gentle because you don't want to crack the stone as well and um, so just take your time and when it's seated you're just going to give this a good polish and send it off to its new owner that's that and that's the piece done so thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this if you haven't already hit the subscribe button to get notifications of new video uploads um, and if you fancy to share your creations whether they were made with my tutorials or your own you can join our artist community group on facebook which is called wire wrappers and metalsmiths worldwide as i said at the beginning of the video i also have all sorts of kits pdf tutorials gemstones copper wire um, and everything you might need for your crafting journey so um, have a look at the link below and see if there's anything that you fancy in my website um, last but not least um, i have tiktok instagram and facebook where i always post little mini tutorials on how i create these pieces so um, you can come and join us there um, that's it for me thank you so much for watching